between the two consecutive bases we have seen the x-ray diffraction experiments conducted by wilkins and franklin there we have seen the stoichiometry we have seen the distance or raise per base pair is 0.34 nanometers right so we know that the raise per base pair the distance between two base pairs is 0.34 nanometers so if we have taken the distance we have taken the distance between the two base pairs between the two bases we will write on between the two bases is 0.34 nanometers if you have to convert this nanometers into meters then you have to multiply this value with 10 power minus 9 so then it will be 0.34 into 10 power minus 9 meters it will become so this is a distance between the two consecutive base pairs then if we have to calculate the length how will you calculate so if we have to calculate the length how will you calculate this is the question exactly what they have asked in NEET 2020 examination children. This question has been asked in the NEET UG 2020 paper. I will show you how to calculate what is the formula. The formula is if you have to calculate the length. Then we have to first know how many base pairs are there. Number of base pairs into the distance between that into the distance between bases now we know our haploid content is 3.3 into 10 power 9 our diploid content which is distributed in 46 chromosomes is 6.6 into 10 power 9 if we take because we are diploid if we take the number of base pairs is 6.6 into 10 power 9 bases and the distance between the bases we have just now seen it is 0.34 into 10 power 9 minus 9 meters so if you multiply the number of base pairs into the distance which is 0. 3 4 into 10 power minus 9 meters now we will get the length when you simplify it you will come to a calculation that is 2.2 meters so the length of the human dna is 2.2 meters this is neat 2020 question and the answers they have given 2 meters 2.2 meters 1.5 meter 1 meter the answer is 2.2 meters and this is a calculation understood now then in ncrt they have asked another question if the length is given they have given the length of e coli is 1.36 millimeters they have given here we are calculating in nanometers or meters but in ncrt they have given one more question if the length of the e coli is 1.36 millimeters they ask to calculate the number of base pairs so then how can you calculate how can you calculate the number of base pairs now we know the formula is length if you have to length is equal to number of base pairs into distance distance between the bases now here they have given you the length already 1.36 millimeters you need to calculate the number of bases you need to calculate the number of bases we know the distance between the bases will be 0 0.34 i will go with 10 power minus 6 meters because it is not in nanometers it is in millimeters so then 10 power minus 9 become 10 power minus 6 so when you have to calculate take this out number of base pairs is equal to so it will be 1.36 divided by 
1.0.34 into 10 power minus 6. So, when you do this calculation, when you simplify this calculation, you will get 4 into 10 power 6 base pairs. When you simplify this, you will get the calculation as 4 into 10 power 6 base pairs. That means the E. coli has 4 into 10 power 6 base pairs. So, this they can also ask us in the neat questions right so since they have asked this in neat 2020 this they can ask in the next year question so we understood how to calculate now you are seeing that 2.2 meters of dna is packed inside a nucleus now if you see what is the size of the nucleus the dimension of a typical nucleus is 10 power minus 6 meters so the dimension of typical nucleus is how much 10 power minus 6 meters just imagine the one in which you have to pack is 10 power minus 6 meters and in this you need to pack 2.2 meters how is it possible that means you are going to pack it into a compact structure how can you explain that compact packing we can explain it with the help of a nucleosome model that we will see in prokaryotes there is no nucleosome first we will finish off the packaging in the prokaryotic dna then we will go to the packaging of the eukaryotic dna we will explain with the help of nucleosome model so we started a topic packaging of the dna helix and then we told how to calculate the length if you know the base pairs and if you know the distance then you multiply you can calculate the length and next they have asked calculate the number of base pairs by giving the length and by giving the distance between the base pairs then we got it and how much you have to keep it you have to keep it in power 10 power minus 6 meters of a nucleus 2.2 meters packing in 10 power minus 6 meters is not possible then what we have to do so we have to make it compact that we will see that is our topic packaging the dna let's go in prokaryotes since nucleus is not there if you are thinking nucleus is not there then the dna can nicely scatter inside the cell no dna will not scatter inside the cell even though nucleus is not there in prokaryotes that means something is something else is holding the dna who is holding the dna in prokaryotes such as e coli though they do not have nucleus in prokaryotes example such as e coli though they do not have they do not have nucleus i'm telling the dna is not scattered the dna is not scattered means the dna is not distributed the DNA which is negatively charged is held with some type of proteins which are called polyamines which are po amine means positive charge which are positive charge will hold the DNA. The DNA is not scattered. Why? Why is a question. The answer what we are giving is DNA which is because it is having phosphate moieties it is negatively charged. It binds with some proteins they have given in NCRT. It binds with some proteins. So, which are having positive charges. But what is the name? What is the name of the positively charged protein? It is polyamine. It is not histone protein. So, the DNA because of the phosphate group what it is having. It give, bears a negative charge. That negative charge will react with some proteins which are having positive charge which are called polyamines the proteins are called polyamines and make a compact structure what do they make they make a compact structure where do they make compact structure at the nucleoid they make a compact structure at the nucleoid that means the dna in the nucleoid is organized into loops held by proteins so the dna which is having negative charge binds with some positively charged proteins which are called polyamines at where it is where it is binding at nucleoid so this dna in nucleoid we are telling that the DNA in nucleoid is organized into large loops. Is organized 
into large loops and these loops are held by proteins so children this is the packaging of the prokaryotic dna even though it doesn't have nucleus this is a bacterial dna we are telling that in the bacterial dna even in absence of nucleus the dna is not scattered the dna is nicely packed with the help of polyamine proteins which are having positive charges they will make nucleoids which will make larger loop like structures so now if we have to see what are those larger loops these are the larger loops so one larger loop another larger loop so like this it is it is packed so these larger loops are held by polyamine proteins so this is a polyamine protein these polyamine proteins will hold the loops and such a type of dna organization is called as nucleoid it is naked dna it is called as nucleoid it is called naked dna but it is not a scattered dna understood now this is a packaging in prokaryotes such as bacteria such as e coli now when we have to talk about eukaryotic packing how can you explain it you can explain it with the help of a nucleosome model let us see the nucleosome model also who is a scientist who coined the term nucleosome audit et al coined the term nucleosome and who are the scientists who proposed the nucleosome model the names of the scientists are thomas and kornberg proposed nucleosome model so in eukaryotes in eukaryotes packaging of dna requires complex structures packaging requires complex structures and we can explain it with the help of nucleosome model and can be explained through a model children what is the model can be explained through nucleosome model can be explained through nucleosome model who proposed the word nucleosome the nucleosome word was coined by what is the name of the scientist who coined the word nucleosome audit et al so the name of the scientist is o u d e t audit et al coined the term nucleosome who proposed the model the nucleosome model was proposed by kornberg and thomas the nucleosome model was proposed by the names of the scientist are kornberg and thomas now if we have to explain the structure of nucleosome first let us draw the structure through that we will try to understand it first let us go and draw the structure right so the structure will be like this i'll erase this here we'll draw the structure first the dna will make two turns one turn and an another turn these two turns are 
connected with a linker DNA. They are connected with the linker DNA and what is there inside the core of the structure. So we have one, two, three and four, one, two, three and four. So it is called as a histone octamer. So what is it called? It is called as a histone octamer which is made of H2A, H2B, H2A, H2B, H3, H4, H3, H4. Now, what is this complete structure called? This is called an octamer, a core of the nucleosome. What is this complete structure called? It is the core of the nucleosome, which is called histone octamer, made up of the histone octamer is made up of four different types of histone proteins. It is made up of four different types of histone proteins. They are H2A, H2B, H3 and H4. This will repeat two times, this will repeat two times, this will repeat two times, this will repeat two times. So, two, four, six, eight will make an octamer. So, this octamer is also called new body. It is also called new body. And what are histone proteins? The histone proteins are made up of they are, excuse me, they are made up of, since DNA is negatively charged, if you want to stabilize the DNA, then the negative charge should be nullified, then you have to bring something positive charge. So, positively containing amino acids means basic amino acids, basic amino acids means lysine and arginine, right? So, the histone proteins are made up of basic amino acids. Histone proteins are made up of basic amino acids like lysine and arginine. So, lysine and arginine are having more amino groups. They have more positive charges. So, histone proteins are made up of basic amino acids lysine and arginine and they have positive charges on them. Now, this positive charge can bind with the negatively charged DNA. Positive charge and negative charge becomes neutral. When the charge becomes neutral, then so-called DNA becomes stable. Then so-called DNA becomes stable. So that is how the DNA is coiling two turns. So, here is one turn and here is one turn. So, DNA makes two turns. Exactly, it is not complete two turns, 1.75 turns. Approximately, you can tell two turns. DNA makes two turns around the histone octamer. It makes two turns around the histone octamer. To form. What is this structure it is forming? The complete structure is called nucleosome. To form a nucleosome. To form a nucleosome. So, nucleosomes. When we see the DNA under electron microscope. When we see the DNA under electron microscope. We find beads and strings. Now, each bead represents one nucleosome. 
and each string represents a linker DNA. Now, what is this linker DNA? One nucleosome is connected to the other nucleosome by the linker DNA. So, bead and a string. Bead and a string. Bead and a string. So, the bead represents nucleosome. The string represents the linker DNA. Linker DNA. So, the nucleosome has DNA which is coiled twice. So, this twice coiled DNA, the DNA make two turns. You know, in the two turns, in the two turns, so 146 base pairs will be there. In the two turns, 146 base pairs will be there. In the linker DNA, 54 base pairs will be there. That means 146 plus 54. Altogether, 200 nucleotides are present per nucleosome. So, in the two turns, 146 base pairs are present. And in the linker DNA, 54 base pairs are present. 146 plus 54, 200 nucleotides are present per nucleosome. So, they have asked a question in NCRT. Theoretically, how many nucleosomes are there? How can you calculate? Theoretically, how many nucleosomes are there means 200 nucleotides in a bead or in a nucleosome. Then they asked how many nucleosomes are there if it is 6.6 into 10 power 9 base pairs. Then how to do the calculation? 1 by 200 into 6.6 into 10 power 9 if you do. 1 by 200 into 6.6 into 10 power 9 if you do. You will get 3.3 into 10 power 7 nucleosomes. Children, all these are the numericals you have to remember. So, theoretically, in a human deployed cell, how many nucleosomes are possible? Means a nucleosome contains 200 nucleotides. Our number of base pairs is 6.6 into 10 power base pairs. 1 by 200 into 6.6 into 10 power 9. If you calculate and if you see, you will get 3.3 into 10 power 7 nucleosomes. It is possible. Understood? So, we are telling that the histone octomer is made up of H2A, H2B, H3 and H4. Where is H1 then? H1 is not the part of a new body. It is not the part of the core. It is not the part of the octomer. H1 is part of the linker DNA. So, here is a linker DNA. With the linker DNA is H1 histone. H1 is with the linker DNA. And 2A, 2B, 3 and 4 twice they will be in the octomer. So, this is about the nucleosome model. Then, then if we see, if we see the packaging, one more small concept is there. One more small concept is there. In eukaryotes, we tell, when we have to pack it in the nucleus, it requires beads on the string. Okay. Beads on the, when we see it in the electron microscope, we see beads and the string. Beads on the string structure, where are they present? In chromatin are packed. How are they packed? They are packed into chromatin fibers. They are packed into chromatin fibers right they are packed into chromatin fibers that are coiled and condensed at the metaphase stage that are coiled and condensed the chromatin is condensed in which stage metaphase stage that are coiled and condensed in metaphase stage of cell division metaphase stage of cell division to form what does it form children to form chromosome so we are telling the beads and the string which is present in the chromosome they are packed like chromatin fibers and these chromatin fibers are condensed in the metaphase stage to make the chromosome 
packaging at higher levels they require an additional set of proteins which are called nhc non histone chromosomal proteins so packaging at higher level packaging at higher level it requires a set of it requires a set of additional proteins you know what are the additional proteins called at nucleosome level the proteins are histone proteins but at higher level of packing like solenoid super solenoid super helical model packaging at higher levels requires a set of additional proteins which are called nhc which are called non histone chromosomal proteins again what does nhc stands for non histone chromosomal proteins are required for higher order packing what is higher order packing solenoid model further is called super solenoid model or hyper solenoid model super solenoid model we require the help of nhc proteins they are telling then when we see a typical nucleus in the typical nucleus some regions of the chromatin are loosely packed right in a typical nucleus in a typical nucleus some regions of the chromatin are loosely packed lightly stained what is it called u chromatin the other region of the dna which is densely packed which is darkly stained is called heterochromatin in a typical nucleus some regions of the chromatin you know there are two types one i am telling it is u chromatin and the other one we are telling it is heterochromatin now what do you mean by c h r o m a t i n so u chromatin means it is loosely packed chromatin it is loosely packed since it is loosely packed it is lightly stained it is lightly stained why is it loosely packed because it is transcriptionally active it has to open for mrna synthesis since it is transcriptionally active since it is transcriptionally active since it has to make rna since it has to open it is loosely packed since there is less dna it will be lightly stained with the fluigen stain that is why it's called u chromatin whereas other chromatin if you see if this is loosely packed then that is this is densely packed because of densely packed it will be darkly stained why it is darkly stained why it is densely packed because it is transcriptionally inactive it is transcriptionally inactive dna transcriptional active dna means it doesn't undergo no transcription transcription will not occur means no rna is made so that is why it is called heterochromatin so what did we discuss in today's session is we are discussing about the packaging of the dna then we are we have calculated how to calculate the length what is the formula length if you have to calculate number of base pairs into distance per base pair when we calculated for human dna it came 2.2 meters 2.2 meters is the length of our r diploid dna it asked it has been asked in neat 2020 question paper then if the equal length is given and if they asked to calculate we calculated that also we got 4 into 10 power 6 base pairs number of bases we got now packaging in prokaryotes is uh it's not having nucleus but then it takes the help of polyamines which are positively charged and it makes a nucleoid which makes larger loops in eukaryotes it can be explained by nucleosome model who coined the word nucleosome audet et al coined the word nucleosome who proposed the model kornberg and thomas proposed what do they tell they tell under electron microscope you find the nucleosomes as beads and strings beads and strings each bead represents one nucleosome one nucleosome is made up of 200 base pairs 
and I forgot to tell you what is the diameter of the nucleosome and what is the height of the nucleosome. The diameter of the nucleosome is 5.5 nanometers and the height of the nucleosome is 11 nanometers and nucleosome is oblate structure. It is disc like structure. We have seen this diagram of a nucleosome. It is there in NCRT textbook also. And theoretically, if you have to calculate the number of nucleosomes in a typical eukaryotic cell, human cell, it is 3.3 .3 into 10 power 7 nucleosomes. And then how to pack it at higher level to make solenoid and super solenoid model. What are the proteins we require? NHC proteins we require. What are NHC proteins? Non-histone chromosomal proteins. And then we talked about what is euchromatin and what is heterochromatin. Hope you understood the lecture. If you like the content, like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.